Hey, look at my stuff. Now, why am I showing you my stuff? Well, I discovered everybody else is showing their stuff out online and people love to see other people's stuff. So I thought I like making videos uh, for nobody to watch or somebody to watch. I just like making videos in general. Um, but I thought I have a lot of crap and maybe somebody wants to see it. The only difference between the people who are showing off their stuff and my stuff is, is my stuff is probably not that exciting. But as we go, I think what we'll do is learn together because I, I'm not going to prepare myself with a bunch of notes um, other than um, how to, what I, what I just want to talk about, like um, intro, uh, story, maybe something exciting, but I'm not going to make a bunch of notes and, and tell you everything so detail about uh, where the, it originated from and things like that, but um, I thought I'd just show off my stuff. And here we're doing that today. Today it is a Swiss Army knife that I'm showing off, and there is more than this one. And the reason I'm showing off Swiss Army knives today is because I grew up with this. Like, ever since I was a kid, uh, my dad um, was obsessed with Swiss Army knives um, in a good way because these things uh, last. They last years and years and they have a lifetime warranty. Um, this uh, particular one right here is my newest one and it is, it's a basic, I keep this at work, it's a basic nail clipper. That's all it does and by far this is one of the greatest nail clippers ever. You get those nail clippers, we clip the nails and then they fly off into space. Well, this one, it's not like that. Not only that, it's razor sharp. I have, when I first started using this, as I press this little lever to lift it out, I have left my thumb over that lever, and as it popped out, it has cut me a couple times. So it is quite very sharp. It does come with what a Swiss Army knife normally does, the tweezers and the toothpick and um it has it has to have a knife and it does these are always razor sharp and it has here um a small nail file there something to clean your nails with this isn't sharp at all on either side it's just for nail and cuticle cleaning and by the way if i say anything wrong or if i if i think I know what it is and you say hey that's not what it is and then you tell me we've learned something together and I learned that hey it's not what I thought it was and I was corrected so just let me know if I'd said anything wrong now I did I, I said I'm not gonna make any notes I did print off a list of all the items that Swiss Army knife um, the tools on every Swiss Army knife so that when I come across one that I have no idea what it is, I can look as a reference, and that's about it. But as far as um, we go into this video, I'm joy. I'm joy. Oh, I'm just going to explain uh, the ones that I absolutely know already. Scissors used for cutting, and so that is pretty basic for. Um, just being a nail clipper. I really enjoy this. I use it a lot. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's my newest one. Put that one over here. Now this one is the one that I carry with me in my pocket at all times. And I've carried this for many years. And I have lost uh, one or two. I mean, I have so many Swiss Army knives. I can't remember which ones I've lost and had to replace. But this one has been around in my pocket for years. And I have a story to go along with it. Gee, I'm hunched over because I want to get in the video. Usually I'm doing other things where I don't need to be in the video and I can just show you what I'm doing down here. But today I'm quite a bit hunched over just so I can get in the video. Now the story with this one is my childhood. My dad, um, well, we all grew up way up on the pass where the snow 
um, gets really deep. You know, the kind where the snow plows, they don't just push it off to the side of the road. They have to um, do a snowblower type thing and create a wall. So they take and go down the road and plow and they toss that snow way up and over the wall of snow. So you have a wall of snow and then the road. Lots and lots of snow. And then when like early summer comes, that's about when it's gone. So it, it sticks around a long time. And the reason I tell you that is when my dad went to um, work one day on his snowmobile, he lost his uh, Swiss Army knife, this one, this Swiss Army knife. And he wanted to get it back so bad, but he had to wait till the snow melted. And he had an idea of where it fell out and it was in an apple orchard. So he waited until, uh, till early summer, late spring when the snow had all melted. And he took his Willie's Jeep with all of us, five kids. No, nah, it couldn't be all five of us. There's five kids in our family, but all of us kids who are old enough to, he went, well, he went and he drove back and forth in the field, in that field, and he said, whoever finds my Swiss Army knife gets five bucks. And that was a big deal back then, because, I mean, we made 50 cents every time we mowed a lawn. And, and a lawn wasn't a small lawn like you think. It was huge. 50 cents was, was uh, what we got paid for mowing lawns. So getting five bucks to find his Swiss Army knife was a big deal. So we're, we're going back and forth through the field in his Willie's Jeep. And we're all looking out, looking, looking for this knife. And, uh, and um, towards the end of the field, we start, started at the top and kind of made our way down. Towards the end of the field, both me and my sister spotted it instantly. Just this red Swiss Army knife sticking out down in the ground, just, just reflecting the sun. And we both go, there it is. And we found it. And... We had, I believe we had to split the five dollars. I can't remember, but the point of me telling you that story is knowing that how much a Swiss Army knife meant to my dad let me know that this was something of quality, that he really needed to get it back. And so I grew up um, knowing and um, carrying a Swiss Army knife with me because my dad did. And this is quality. It's a great knife. I I mean, I've said I've had it for years and it's helped me everywhere. It can be a life-saving tool. And I'll explain that as I go through each thing uh in a moment. But this thing is wonderful. And I recommend everybody carry around a pocket or a Swiss Army knife, not a pocket knife. It has to be Swiss Army knife with them uh everywhere they go. Now, um, the Swiss Army knife is, has been around, from what I've read a few, in a few articles online, uh, is that the Swiss Army knife got popularized in the U.S. Uh, a, a little bit after World War II. Now, what I'm telling you is just I'm relaying information of what I found on the internet. And we know how the internet is factual and it, it is correct, right? No, not all the time. So the things that I tell you, I've just learned by reading and they might have just been made up. But what I was reading about is that after World War II, quite a few of the soldiers um, bought up a a large quantity so that when they went back to America they can hand them out to their friends and family as souvenirs and that's where it started getting popular in America and and uh, and I believe uh, that uh, it started in 1894 was the first you know what? I'm going to verify that. So I'm bringing out my GAN cube for my reference. And if you don't know why I bring out the GAN cube, you're going to have to go a few videos back to um, to understand why I bring this out. 
Okay, so I was wrong about the date. Um, it's 1884 when the when the um, when the Swiss Army knife started. 1884 is the beginning of the Swiss Army knife, and this has, from what I'm understanding here in reading, is this has really nothing to do with the Swiss army. It was just advertised as the Swiss army knife, but it, it wasn't tied to the Swiss army. Um, um, maybe later it was, but in the beginning it says it wasn't. And the brand of knife, the Swiss Army knife, is uh, Victrinox, and uh, that was the the reason it was called Victrinox, you see I can I use this a lot, is that uh, the knife was named after the, I'm going to say the guy's name, Carl um, Elsener, Elsener, Carl Elsener, was the one who um, started this in 1884, and he named the uh, Victrinox after his mother, Victoria. So we have the Victoria in Victrinox, but the Enox was added later, which it says is French for stainless steel. So that I just learned now. And and this, the, this one I'm actually reading directly from the Swiss Army website, so I know that one is true. So we have his mother's name and stainless steel tied to this. So let's go on to the next one that I have. I'll, I'll go through some of these in just a moment, these tools, but that's the one I carry all the time, and I don't know how many years, and I do replace parts, little parts, especially the toothpick. I use that a lot. Um, my next one is, it was a family hand-me-down, and you can see that the Swiss Army symbol is a little bit different. So I had to verify, even though it was a hand-me-down from the family, that it actually was Swiss Army. And the first thing that I did notice is it does say Victrinox. So it is a Swiss Army knife. And then I went in and, and, and kind of went to, into the information previously to see when this symbol was used and this knife falls somewhere around the it, it was pretty common and it falls somewhere at late 70s early 80s is when a lot of these knives were being made so it's not a long hand-me-down from my family generation to generation it's just um, a hand-me-down from a couple generations and this is the oldest one that I have and it has really pretty much the basics um, once again we'll go through these tools in uh, in just a moment so how shall I set these so you can see them like that like that yeah, that's pretty good now the next one I discovered um, when I went into a sports uh, sportsman store sportsman den sports place um, not not anything like Cabela's or anything top. It was just a small place. And I saw this, which looks like a Leatherman. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting for Swiss Army Knife. I know my mom loves uh, Leathermans because she does a lot of uh, carpentry stuff, or she did at the time, and she always carried her Leatherman with her. But when I saw that uh, Victorinox made it, and I'll get in a little bit closer there, you can see the stamp and probably the camera too um, and it's the Swiss tool when I saw that they made something similar to the um, the, the Leatherman I had to have it and so I asked the guy how much he was selling it for and he didn't really know and everybody else was busy and I said does it come with a pouch and he goes you know what, I'll tell you what, I'll give it to you at $20. I'll give it to you for 20 bucks, since it doesn't ha have a case, and I'll throw in a case with it. And I don't know why he wanted to get rid of it so fast. Maybe I was bugging him, or... He was nice, 
but he sold me this genuine uh, Swiss Army Victronox uh, Swiss tool for 20 bucks, brand new. Didn't come with a case. I don't, I don't know if they're supposed to. And maybe that's the reason he goes, oh, well, he knows that they're supposed to come with cases, so I'll give him a discount. I don't know. But I got this for 20 bucks, and I was blown away, and I didn't argue. I bought it right there. And it comes with uh, all the tools that are needed for, uh, I guess, well, <laughs> all these come with the tools that you need to survive, that you could use in a, in a survival event. This is more of, um, I think, a carpenter's type knife. Um, just my, and that's how I grew up. I saw my mom doing carpentry and she carried this and I saw my dad doing uh, wilderness type survival things and he carried these. So I assume that that would be uh, a carpenter's tool. Now, this last one I've also had for a few years, and I don't use it as much as the other ones. I bought it when I had a bit of money to spend, brand new. I bought it brand new because I wanted just some sort of, of a coffee table um, Swiss Army knife to, to show off. And I just recently looked up... Um, uh, tried to look up a list of all the tools that are on this Swiss Army knife and this has been discontinued for a while apparently so I couldn't really find any manuals other than the ones that they're going to try to charge for um, but this is the Swiss Champ XAVT and it's ruby in color and I prayed a, pe I prayed I paid a pretty penny for this brand new when it when it was out now you can see these little divots and stuff when my son was much younger he kind of took a pen and poked into the top so the case around it doesn't look so great but take a look at this puppy look at how many tools are on this and i do know that there is one bigger than this um that is has i think every single tool on it that's ridiculous, uh, but it was cool that they can make that. But this is everything in one. This is the Swiss Jam. And I'm going to use this one to go through all the tools um, that the Swiss Army um, uses, because this will carry most of them. There might be a couple that aren't on this. Like, for example, fingernail clippers by themselves won't be on this. But I'm going to go through this and show you every single uh, tool that's on here. So, first off, we have on the front here the time. And the symbol here is the button to change things. And you can change this time to be 24 uh, military time um, and if you needed to through the settings. I'm not going to do that, but it can do go back and forth. We also have um, altitude right now, which is um, incorrect right now. There is, a, there is a way to reset it. You just press when you're at zero and it starts over, I believe. Anyways, I'm going to mess that up. We'll, we'll just keep going. Oh, oh, you can change it up and down. Yes, you can set it to the altitude that you're at. But after time, it kind of gets a little bit off. But it stays correct for a very long time, just to let you know. So we have the... Um, um, uh, can show the altitude, and you can change... I believe you can change from feet to meters... And you have the barometer, and you have the alarm, and you have a timer, and 
Did I press it? A stopwatch. And you have the temperature. And that is pretty darn accurate. You can't really change that or change the settings on that. That's how how um, how Fahrenheit it is in here right now. Uh, that's the temperature it is right now. And those are some nifty, nifty um, features just in this this front thing, this digital clock, this digital piece that they put, that put it on here. And we haven't even got past the first part yet. We're just still on the outside. Let's go to this side. We have tweezers, which is usually on most of them. We have the toothpick. And like I said, toothpicks I use a lot. Um, I like my teeth to be clean after I eat. So as you can see, I'm always ordering extra parts for these. And we have here, we have, and I use this a lot too, the pen. Now this pen is pressurized, so it's not like you have to keep it, keep your Swiss Army knife always down so that the gravity keeps the ink down here. It's pressurized to push the ink down to the ballpoint there. And it writes good and lasts a long time. Now I don't use it on this one all the time. I use it on the one I carry around. I use that pen. It's the same pen. So when I say I use, from now on, when I say I use these a lot, it's on this knife that I use it. Because I don't really use this that much. It's, it's, it's uh, really cool, but it, it's too much to keep in my pocket. And then we have here, we have the corkscrew. And this fits right into the corkscrew. This is a um, small screwdriver for... Uh, glasses size screws the teeny tiny uh, Phillips screws in the glasses and then that just kind of goes right up in there and before I close this I don't have one in here so it fell out before but but uh, I'll show you it on this one it comes with a pin and that pin has been very useful for a for a lot of things. I didn't think I'd use it a lot, but that stainless steel pin that comes with it, there's a teeny tiny hole and it slides right in there underneath the corkscrew and that just closes down on it right into place. So, and the pin I probably took from here before because I lost that one or it broke or, or I'm not broke, bent. So we've done the outside. Now let's start going through these on the top. We have the small knife. We have the large knife. Every single one of these should have that, except for this, the nail nail um, clippers. It just has a small knife, even smaller than this first one that I was showing you. These are sharp. Don't put your finger here, thingy. Don't don't put your thingy here. Put your don't put your finger here when closing. And yes, I have done that before. We have the nail filer, and I have read that this side right here can be a steel file. Um, that it's that it's uh, strong enough to do that. But here we have the nail file, and once again, something to clean your nails if you need to. Then we have this right here. And you know what? I believe I read that it's a cheese spreader. It's not super sharp, but it does have that blade on it. But I do want to verify. I don't want to mess that one up. And, and you know what? I've discovered I have a list of every single tool that they make currently. Well, there's a couple on here that aren't current anymore. They don't use them at all. So I might not even find that one. But I'll look. I see... Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I don't think they use that one anymore. 
but I could be wrong. Um, I think there's it's either a cheese spreader or it's a watch opener, like the back of a watch. You know how it's tough to get them open sometimes? I think it was recommended or it was mentioned that it could be that too to pop open a watch. And I have used it like that before. So it has that one. And then there's this right here. This looks like a, um, not looks like, this is a bottle opener uh, for your uh, pop. And there's a screwdriver on the end of that. There's also a, excuse me, wire stripper on that one. That's what that's used for, correct? I, I believe I haven't stripped wires before. Eight. Yes, it's a wire stripper. That little gap right there. And then it comes with these. There's a couple, couple of these. We'll start. There's one here and then one back here. But it's the tool that comes with a bunch of uh, smaller bits that you can change out so that the you can use it for small this one would be kind of an asterisk shape this one's the stop stop sign shape and i know that's not what they're called but um i'm just showing telling you because it's it's hard to see with this camera and it, so there's one two three and then four and each of these you can turn around to a different tool so in this set here we have eight different bits to change in and out and so this one just holds them in place the ones that you're not using and this is the one that holds it for the one that you're using and they come out all the way and then you can use it how now i have used this before when i've discovered some small thing that I've got like I've used this on my phone before this has worked the bits have you I've used in an iPhone before to take it off and dry it out after I threw it in the sink so I've used those before so it has that and it has maybe this is the cheese spreader this looks like it's kind of like a spatula like something that I'd use to mix up a couple of um, I don't know, like, a, I don't know what, it just looks like a spatula. Like, when you need, you you judge what it is, okay? It's pretty, it's not sharp, it just is, it takes that shape. And I know, I, I don't, I, what it looks like is a little mini pizza oven remover. You remove the pizza and bring it out. But it, it's a spatula-esque. We have, if I can get it, I don't have fingernails right now because I just used the clipper before. We have another one of these um, um, stubby knives, and this one is sharp. This one is much sharper. This looks like something that you could kind of um, thin down an item. Um, and this right here, this curve, looks like you could use that for a wire um, stripper too, like something like that. It's sharp as well, that little, that little dip right there. Maybe that's the cheese spreader. I don't know. Cheese spreaders aren't sharp. It can't be. Here's another one, another stubby. But this one's curved down. It's very sharp also. This one, maybe a paring knife of some kind. Then I have the scissors. I use scissors all the time, so much so that in this knife, the spring on the scissors is, yeah, I need to replace it because it's so bent that I have to snip and then pull back up. I use those all the time. Then we have this, and, and I believe, I'm trying to show you, there's a little bit of a curve. I believe out of everybody I've asked and talked about, this is a belt hole puncher, and you can use it for other things. It's really sharp right here. But as you go in and turn around and push into leather, it um, 
creates a new hole for your belt. Here's another knife, but this one's serrated. Also very sharp. It's got the bumps on it, you can see. And then we have here a magnifying glass. Now, why would we need a magnifying glass? Well, if you're actually using your Swiss Army knife out in the wilderness and you're lost, getting cold, you have a little bit of sunshine and you need to start a fire, well, what happens when you put a magnifying glass, uh, you, you set it on a, on a leaf or something dry and let the sunbeam come through, it'll catch fire. It's, it's a fire starter. So that's why they've done that. Now, you can use it as a magnifying glass to see closer, but I believe the intention was to be a fire starter. That's pretty smart. Now on this side, I don't need to pull it out. I will, I will, I'll pull it out. That's just a place to put in batteries. But it sits like that in there. And then we have, if I could get, if I could pull it the right way, a flashlight, pretty bright flashlight. Oops. And then we go on to the next, and we have more of these. Now, I did lose a bit. I'm really saddened by it. I can't find a place to fill it, and um, I don't know where it is. But it comes with one, two, three, four. So that, and then, again, you can turn it over, and there is four more. So you got eight tools in one. Now, these are all Phillips and flathead screwdriver, just different sizes. You see, you can go really small with that Phillips, really teeny tiny. And I have used those before too. I use this a lot, more than I thought I would. The pliers for many different things. If you open up the pliers all the way, you can see this gap in here. That's a wire cutter. You can throw a wire through there and cut it. And down here, this little uh, notch is a wire crimper. Crimp a wire with that. I haven't done that, but that's what it's for. Then we have a regular, um, pretty basic, and it's, it's worked in almost every single Phillips uh, screw. It's a Phillips screwdriver right here. Now we have another magnifying glass that's a little bit smaller. Now, I don't know if it's just um, another way to start a fire. Maybe you need a different beam. I, I don't think so. But what I've discovered with this, and I think that's what they were going for, is if you take out this first magnifying glass and you line it up with this, and you use it almost like a microscope. You can put your eye here and get really close to what you need to look at. It gets really, really close. And I don't know if you'll be able to see what I see. Oh, you can. Wow, you can. Um, yeah, okay. Ooh, fingerprint. Now I'm starting to see all this dirt and nastiness on my fingerprint. It gets very, very close. Even with that, I see pretty good detail on my phone. So that means you'll be seeing a lot of good detail. I'm thinking that's what they created it for, to look at something really, really close. But maybe they just made another one for making another fire. Um, I don't know. Okay, we have the can opener, and I have used this out camping. Very useful, just the, like the original can opener. You just go around the can until it's all the way open. Has another Phillips screwdriver right on top. It's a little smaller one. And we have that thick Phillips screwdriver on this side. And another bottle opener, it seems, with another wire stripper. So that is all the top tools of this. 
So we go to the bottom and it looks like we have another belt hole maker. And I've been told that this is for thread. This hole is for thread. Um, I'm guessing if you need to push it through something and then pull it at the other side, that's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's how that works. Uh, here we have this universal hook. I've never really used these. Why is it not coming out? Probably because I never use it. There are two of these. There's one right next to it again. And they're really strong. And if if I've ever used it, because I've done it to test it out, it's like if I need to lift something and I need a little bit more grip that's really small, I've used it and carried something around rather than carried it and had that thin wire or whatever pushing into my skin. It, it helps. It's very strong. I don't know... It's, it's, there's many universal uses you could use this for, but I don't know why there's two on this. Maybe it's extra strong, and you can't get your hand around it, so it's not really comfortable. But these hooks, I've seen some examples before where they have to pull off a bike chain. Rather than putting your fingers around and trying to pull off the bike chain, you can use the hook to pull it around, um, which is pretty smart. Now, on the back of this hook, right... On the back here, there's a nail file, which you might be able to see right there so you can file your nails. On the other one, it's just a hook. Then we have another screwdriver. And that's all that is, I believe. Uh, there's nothing sharp, there's nothing else fancy about that. So then we got another screwdriver. So we got two pretty similar screwdrivers. As a matter of fact, Nah, one's a little bit smaller than the other. No, maybe they're the same size, but that's all they are. Now, there may be some use and some reason that there's two of them. Don't know. But they're there. Now, that completes all the tools on this uh, Swiss Champ. Uh, other than, I, 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 there is that keychain ring for those who want to carry their keys with their pocket knife. I don't see why you'd need to do that because that's more than you need to carry and they get it just doesn't seem like a keychain type thing. But they have that there. And so that is so that's the Swiss champ there. I'm going to go through these and see if there's anything missed. Obviously, we have the pliers here and wire cutters that isn't in that, but that's what the main reason for this uh, uh, Swiss tool is, is to kind of be some pliers, universal pliers. We do have kind of right here, and the same on the other side, it looks like a, a nail puller, put the nail in there and pull it out, kind of a, um, well, back of a hammer, what do you call that, pry bar or whatever. Um, there's a nail file, a Phillips screwdriver, scissors, same scissors that are on the other ones, another um, belt hole punch, and we have a bottle of uh, can opener. We have we have the saw. The saw. I thought there was a saw in this, but maybe not. The saw is very useful. And it goes really good on small branches. Not teeny branches, but, you know, something that you need to get down. This is really good, and it takes it off fast. Now, I don't think there is a saw in that. Interesting. With all the tools, I thought they had more. Nope, I don't see anything. Well, there's a saw in this one. And another, well, I already showed you that one. Then there's a huge, thick, thick Phillips screwdriver and a smaller one, bottle opener. Got a couple of wire strippers there again. We have mega stubby Phillips, not Phillips, flathead screwdriver. And then you have, you have to have a knife. 
That's what's on that one. On this one, real basic. Don't need to pull it out. We have the um, belt punch, the corkscrew, small and large uh, knife, and we have the um, two uh, flathead screwdrivers with the can opener. By the way, um, this can be used in certain, certain situations the way it's created to be to insert into Phillips screws. So it's, it's teeny enough that it sometimes works in Phillips screws. Uh, yes. Okay, so this one, small knife, big knife, file, file, and it does come with a saw. That's why I was confused why there's no saw on that one, because this one comes with saw, and I've used that a lot. Ooh, did I just swipe my finger across that saw? Now, this is not sharp. It's to do with fish. It's a descaler, I believe, and this would be a fish hook degouger to get the fish hook out. And it comes with a ruler in inches and I believe centimeters. I don't know why you'd want to measure something like that unless you caught a goldfish. But that's in there as well. We have scissors, we have pliers, we have magnifying glass, Phillips screwdriver bottle opener with phillips or uh, flathead screwdriver can opener with that uh, also the flathead screwdriver that can work sometimes with the uh, star screws and small screwdriver corkscrew a pin in there we have a small flat screwdriver yeah, all these are pretty similar. And then there's that hook again. And I carry that. That's the one I carry with me all the time. I think I went through that one already. So, hey, there's my stuff. I learned uh, something today. I learned uh, I learned Victor Knox is uh, Victoria stainless steel in French. Vic Enox is stainless steel in French. I learned something. Um, I hope you learned something too. So. Hey, thanks for looking at my stuff. Uh, I'll see you in another video some other time. So, later, Gator.